beliefs and that, that all, all men, they say, may gather at the hospitable altars of masonry no matter what their religious belief. So in that sense, they're very much part of, of pushing toward a one world religion and to, to, view, to view biblical Christianity as basically the enemy. Because biblical Christianity makes unique, unique claims about itself that, that none of these other groups, the Rosicrucians, the Masons, any of these groups, will acknowledge. Some of us are convinced it's important that Christianity be held distinct from some of the elements that are found here in Rosalind Chapel. After all, the message of Jesus Christ is very, very unique. But throughout history, you've always found those who want to blend together various ideas, various organizations, and various religions. And here at the Rosalind Chapel, people can come and they can practically see anything that they want. But within the monument is evidence, not only of what the Templars and Masons came to believe, but perhaps a reflection of things to come. The promise of a land where one day their ancient hope might be fulfilled. For inside Rosslyn Chapel, along with the haunting imagery, is evidence of the new world prior to the discovery of Columbus. Well, there is, uh, there is this window which, uh, which is decorated, uh, the window frame is decorated with Indian corn or maize, and the chapel was built in the 15th century. So it is, it is strange that Indian corn, which wasn't ever uh, grown here, uh, is used as a motif. The chapel was finished around 1492, the same year Columbus is thought to have come to America. This would mean the carvings would have been completed beforehand. But how did the Masons who built this chapel have knowledge of Indian corn, a crop not grown in Europe and indigenous to the New World? Who knows? There are lots of mysteries about this chapel. Another mystery is the presence of Aloha cactus plants, also indigenous to America, and like the Indian corn, carved along the arches of the chapel. But even with these, academics have been skeptical. Yet a third carving, a trefoil plant, or type of clover, is said by Rosslyn Chapel director Stuart Beatty to have convinced one skeptic in particular. The, the trefoil plant is quite interesting. Um, Roslyn Chapel does have carvings of plants that we believe came from the New World before Columbus discovered America. Uh, we've, we've had these plants investigated and a botanist from the university had a good look at them and he, he wasn't particularly convinced, as academics need to be, he wasn't 100% sure that these plants were in fact aloha cactus and sweet corn. And I think his, his logic was that the, the people who went to the New World and recorded these images on parchment brought those images back. They would have been translated to wood and then subsequently translated to stone. And it's that process which removes them from the original two or three times, which means that there are discrepancies that can build in. And so being an academic, he, he was uncomfortable with these images. And um, when looking around the chapel, he suddenly, his, his eyes lit up and he came and got me and he said, whilst I was fairly unsure about the sweet corn and aloha cactus as being honestly genuine, I have found a trefoil plant on what would have been the outside of the chapel at the time, but is now the baptistry, that would only have been found in the New World. Therefore, I am much more comfortable to say that the other plants are also honest and true. When the Templars were arrested in Europe, many of them are said to have escaped with a great fleet of ships that were never to be found. Could they have made their way to the New World? If so, they could have handed down this knowledge through secret societies to men like Francis Bacon and before him, Christopher Columbus. Some, some people believe that Columbus didn't just accidentally stumble onto America, that uh, some secret society which he had access to 
uh, had knowledge of the existence of, uh, of the continent of both North and South America. Was Christopher Columbus a member of a secret order? Some researchers point to this painting that depicts Columbus with his left hand in a Kabbalistic gesture, denoting the left-hand path of the initiate, meaning the path of darkness or secrecy. In addition, the ships of Columbus sailed to the New World adorned with red crosses on a white background, the symbol of the Knights Templar. Columbus's wife was the daughter of a famous Knights Templar line that passed along what are called portal lands and cartographs that Columbus had direct access to. And we know that he robbed the Portuguese and brought all of those portal lands to Isabella and Ferdinand. Um, w what I'm suggesting is that there were the, uh, people knew about this new Atlantis. They, they knew at the time of Columbus and before the time of Columbus. But did the secret societies involved view the new world as Atlantis of old? And if so, from where did they develop this idea? Was it only from Plato's account?